Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, we have quite a project for today. We are going to be turning this junky area behind our greenhouse into what is hopefully gonna be a beautiful outdoor container garden food plot. We have chosen to grow in container gardens, actually almost everywhere in, on the homestead these days for a number of reasons. Uh, the first reason is we can control the soil that goes into the container gardens. We have terrible soil here in Southern Missouri, very rocky, very clayey, just hard to grow in. We can control the moisture and we can control whether or not the bugs eat our spring plants alive. We have struggled over the last probably five to seven years with growing brassicas, things like uh, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, uh, all of the early spring plants because we have such a huge population here of cabbage moths and they lay the cabbage worms which get in all of our plants and just destroy them as soon as the weather starts to warm up a little bit. Now last year we did some experimenting trying to keep the bugs off of our spring plants, our cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, that kind of thing. And it worked so well that this year we are expanding that idea, which we're going to be showing you today near the end of the video. Right, we need to do a lot of other things first. So basically today what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this area completely cleaned up we're gonna lay down some new weed fabric. We're gonna get all the weeds out of here. We're gonna fill up about 15 buckets and then we are gonna get planting some plants. Now it's still a while before we can plant things like our tomatoes and peppers and all of those summer plants. We've talked to you guys about this in the past. We really have two different growing seasons here when it comes to summer type plants or spring and summer type plants. We have what we call our early spring season, which is for cool weather things like brassicas. And then we have our summer growing seasons for all of the things that you think of in a regular outdoor garden. But today we're focusing on those early spring plants. So let's get to work. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna hop on the tractor. We're gonna move a bunch of this stuff out of the way. We got, see all of this old wood here. These are actually, these were fence panels or gate panels that went in front of our hay barn because the old owner of this property, he would allow the cattle to kind of go around the hay barn and he used these to block off the front of the hay barn. We've moved the fence line so they can no longer get to the front of the hay barn. So we have no need to block it off. Today, we're just gonna move them out of the way. At some point, I'll take them apart and use, you know, keep any lumber that I can out of them. But for today, we're gonna move them to a different part of the homestead. I've got over here an old silage tarp. This has been laying back here for I think three or four years now. This was just a big tarp that we bought to originally kill out the grass where we wanted our first garden here on this homestead. So you guys, this is all just stuff that over time we didn't know where to put and now we need to move it out of the way. So I'm gonna hop on the tractor and we're gonna get to work. Full stop, can't believe I live in your thoughts. I think about you all the time, morning, evening, and such a wonderful delight Forgo Give up everything that I own Yeah, I'd give it all up now Just to be with you somehow Unexpected love was found You're the rose in a garden Come on, we got it. Rose in a garden And it's 
of the junk is moved out of the way and kind of put into different spots or thrown away. So what we're left with now is our weed fabric, a bunch of weeds, and long grass. So we need to do something about all of that. But I wanted to pause here for a second to show you guys and kind of dispel some myths. We did a video, I don't know, just several videos ago talking about this landscape fabric and what a game changer it has been for the homestead. There were people in that video that pretty much argued with us that things like Bermuda grass will grow right through this weed fabric. And I want to show you that that, in our experience, is absolutely not true. Now you can see here on this weed fabric, there is a ton of Bermuda grass. But let me show you what's happening um, none of this Bermuda grass is growing through the weed fabric unless we have given it a spot to actually grow through. So let me show you. Let's start over here. Here is a bunch of Bermuda right here. And this, all of this here is growing through. If we trace it back to where it actually is coming through the fabric, right here, there is a hole, somehow a hole got cut in the fabric and that's where all of this has grown through. Now the thing with Bermuda is it puts out runners and tiny little roots. If there are, if there's dirt or other things on top of the fabric, and this is what we were trying to talk about in the last video, this is a perfect example of it. If there is dirt and other things on top of the fabric, then those new roots that are on the runners of this Bermuda grass, it will start to grow and root into the dirt that's on top of the fabric. The Bermuda grass will grow on top of the fabric, but it will never grow from the bottom side of the fabric up unless you give it a spot like this to come through. Look at this is the main part. All of that was coming through that one hole. That is not a fault of the weed fabric. That is a fault of us for allowing there to be a hole that we didn't either cover up or do something about. The plan is today we're going to put down some new weed fabric that will partially cover this stuff and add a little extra length. And then at some point in the future, we'll do exactly what we did out in the garden, which is put landscape timbers around the edge of the, of the weed fabric. And that gives us a nice area to be able to weed eat up against and uh, keep that Bermuda from kind of creeping up and over.
Okay, we have all of the junk cleared away from within this area. We have the grass mowed down as much as it needs to be and as many of the weeds picked as need to be. So the next step in the plan is to lay down new weed fabric. This new piece of weed fabric is going to be 15 feet wide this way, so it will overlap into the grass and then the entire length of the existing weed fabric. Well, I would say that this area is really starting to take shape. It looks already a ton better than it did when we started earlier today. So the next step, now that we have the new weed fabric down, everything's nice and cleaned up, the next step is going to be figuring out the layout that we want for these tubs that we have here. Now this area in particular is really a perfect place for us to have the, this little growing area. This area has full sun, which is perfect for growing really any kind of vegetables. And this area in particular is really kind of a high traffic area for us. One thing that we've learned over the course of now almost 15 years of homesteading is that we really want things to be in high traffic areas. If we put things that are far away, uh, things that we don't get near very often, they tend to just be out of sight and out of mind. Right. So things, especially things that need daily attention like plants, uh, we really want those in areas where we're gonna see them often. We are gonna be growing all of these plants in these buckets like this. We've been using these kinds of buckets for a long time. These are actually cattle protein tubs that you know the cattle have licked all the protein out during the winter or whatever and then they just leave behind these buckets right. and they're really perfect for growing in what we like about these is that first of all we can get them pretty inexpensively yes. either we save them from our own cattle or we buy them from other cattle farmers in our area <laughs> Uh, we can usually get them for just a few dollars. Yeah, three to five dollars is really each is the going rate in our area. And you can find them being advertised on Facebook Marketplace and on Craigslist, or you could just ask people that you know that have cattle. Right. And so these are, they're, well, some of them are a little bit taller. They, they range from about 16 to about 18 inches tall which is plenty deep for almost all vegetables. There are very few vegetables that are going to root deeper than about 16 or 18 inches. In fact, you guys have seen the tomatoes that we grow in the greenhouse in these same tubs. Those tomato plants will grow taller than the top of the greenhouse. And again, their roots are only about 16 inches into the ground. Now, obviously they come without any holes in them and we do, we do need drainage holes. So we will go ahead and drill some drainage holes just a couple inches up from the bottom uh, with a drill. And that will allow some water to stay at the bottom so it's not completely dried out, um, but will allow excess water to drain out of it. Here's one that we've used in the past, and when we originally started using these, we always drilled holes all the way in the bottom. But what we've started doing now is instead of putting holes in the bottom, we put holes in the sides. Uh, we put them up even a little higher than this so that a little bit of water can stay at the bottom of the bucket, and that way uh, they don't dry out nearly as quickly. But again, since we have this one, 
we'll use it, no problem. So we are gonna be using these obviously, but you know, if you're gonna do an area like this, any kind of raised bed would work, any other kind of big containers or buckets, uh, that way we can control the soil, control the moisture, and like we said before, we're gonna control the bugs as well. Right. So we haven't figured out exactly the layout that we're gonna mm -hmm. use here yet. There's a few things to keep in mind. We obviously need to leave room so that the door of our greenhouse can still open up. Now the other thing that we need to consider is that this is the exhaust fan for our greenhouse. This is a very powerful fan. When the greenhouse starts to get too warm, this fan will kick on and it will suck all of the warm air out of the greenhouse and blow it out this way. So this fan really, really blows powerfully. Like if you stand here to blow your hat off. So we don't really want to put any plants right here in front of this because they're going to get damaged from all that wind. So we're going to grab our 16 tubs that we know we're going to use and we're going to play around here a little bit just figuring out the layout before we start filling them because right now they don't weigh very much but once we fill them up with compost they're heavy and they're hard to move around so we'd rather figure that out beforehand. That's seven. Just for, just for example purposes, I mean, we have them like that. Is that too close to the fan? Yes, I think so. Really? You want me to turn it on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's That's weird. too strong. Yeah. I didn't think it would be so strong way over here. Yeah. I've got an idea though. Let me turn this okay. off. We might want to do it this way though because that's, pr that's a little close to that fan. The whole row would need to be this way, but I think that's probably fine. I think that'll look nice. All right, I think we have it all figured out. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it should be that big of a decision, but like I said, once these are filled up with compost, they're heavy and I don't really want to move them around. Uh, I think this is going to work really well. This gives us two rows here, so two rows of four and two rows of four, that's our 16 pots. It also leaves us a walkway down the center here so that we can get to you know, the sides of every pot. When we run the irrigation system, it will run you know, from the greenhouse, it'll run along here with a line that comes down in between the two rows of pots and then an irrigator inside of each pot. So that will work out really well. Now that we've made up our minds, we're not going to change them. We're just going to go and we're going to start filling these pots with compost. To fill our pots, we are going to be using some of the organic compost that we got delivered last fall. If you didn't see that video, we basically we had a huge truckload, like half a semi load full of this organic compost brought to us by a company that's local to Missouri called Hanson's Tree Service. They produce this or uh, compost from tree clippings. Uh, they actually collect food waste and scraps from one of the big amusement parks in Branson, Missouri. And they, they have a facility where they make this organic compost. This has been sitting since last fall. So we are confident that it is already done composting. It's no longer hot. So we are actually gonna be filling our pots completely full with this compost. Now, if you don't have access to this amount of compost because it is a large quantity, we recommend that you fill your pots or your containers with 50% compost and then the other 50% can be potting soil. That's actually a really great mix for container gardening. Right, and that's what we use most of the time if we don't have a, a big quantity of compost like this available. So you can see we brought three buckets over in the tractor. We're basically gonna fill three at a time and then take them back and put them into place. Um, no big secret on how to fill them. <laughs> We're just gonna use a shovel and fill them up. So as soon as we are done with that and we have all of the pots filled, we'll get back with you guys. We'll show you them full and then we'll get on to planting and show you our solution for keeping those pesky bugs off of your plants. Well, as you can probably tell, it's the next day because we're wearing different clothes. So yesterday we ended up working on this project for about five hours. We were able to get all of the buckets filled, the weed fabric down and everything like that. But then the day just got too late and we had to move on to other things. 
So we're back today. We're going to finish this project today. Now there are three things left that we need to complete within this project. We need to install our watering system, our irrigation system. We need to plant the plants that we want to grow in here. And then we need to uh, set up the way that we are going to protect all of these from insect pressure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the irrigation system. I'm going to show you guys quickly how we do that. We're going to use the same type of system that we use inside the greenhouse. We're just going to kind of extend it here outside. Now there's only a few basic parts to the irrigation system that we use. This is just a, I believe it's half inch uh, mainline tubing. This will run from the far end of the greenhouse down to here. And then to actually water in the pots, we use these little sprinklers. They will attach to the main line. We'll make a little hole so this can attach to the main line. I'll show you that when we get to that. And these will go in the center of each bucket. These spray out uh, kind of a mushroom shape when we turn the water on. And they do a really good job on a bucket this size. All right, we're going to get to work putting this all together. It shouldn't take us very long at all and then we can test it out and see how it actually waters in the buckets. So we're up at the front of the greenhouse. This is where we already have a valve and you can see I have it capped off here. This is where this line used to run down for a row of buckets on the side of the greenhouse. Uh, right here is where we connect our garden hose to start the irrigation system. You can see our hose bib over there, our frost free hydrant, and we just run a hose from there to here when we want to water. This is a little inline filter that helps take get any sediment out before it gets to those little sprinkler heads. Now, when we get ready to install the system in our big garden where we installed all of those raised beds last fall, I'm going to do a very in-depth video about setting up a system like this from start to finish. So uh, watch for that video if you really want to learn how to do this more in-depth, but that'll be probably another month or so before we get to that point. I'm going to just undo this and we're going to connect our new piece of main line and take this off we don't need that anymore we'll connect our new piece of main line and then we'll just unroll this all the way down to the back side of the greenhouse the next thing we need to do is install two of these T connectors because we need to run another piece of the same type of tubing from here in between the rows of the pots. All right, so we've got our pieces of main line all completely hooked up. It's time to move on to actually installing the uh, sprinkler heads. The way that we're going to do this is, again, there's going to be one in the center of each of these buckets. And these need to run, run to the main line. So this is a kind of a flexible eighth inch tubing. There's a little barb on the end of each one. Now we use a little tool that looks like this to poke a hole in that main line. And then this barb will just kind of plug into that hole. So let me show you that down here. So we'll take our tool here. It will make a hole in the top of the main line. And then our barb for our sprinkler head just pops in there like that. And that one's all hooked up. So we'll just go around. We're going to do this for all 16 of these buckets. And then we'll be ready to test out the sprinkler system. Well, now that the buckets are filled and the watering system is set up and working, it is time to finally get started planting all these buckets. We're going to be planting cauliflower, cabbage, Napa cabbage, and collards. You may wonder, you know, where the broccoli is in that whole grouping. Uh, we've decided not to grow broccoli this year. It just gets hot so quickly here. 
that they don't ever have a chance to put on a nice head before they bolt. So for this year, we've just given up and we're just gonna plant these things instead. Now we planted all of these uh, seedlings that we have here, we planted these from seed. Probably about six weeks ago, we started them. They are looking fabulous and they are definitely ready to get into some soil. I am going to be planting two of these plants per bucket. Now that, that spacing is probably a little bit close together, but we did it last year and it worked really well. So planting in the soil is, it's a dream you guys, because it's so nice and fluffy. I'm going to be starting off planting this Napa cabbage, but really all of these are planted the exact same way. So the first step with planting these is to just dig a hole. And I'm going to be placing these kind of close to the edge just to maximize the amount of space between the two plants. So that hole is just fine. Just tip this upside down and pat it a little bit. You can see how absolutely gorgeous and healthy these roots are. And really that's because we started them on time. If you start them too early, they'll be all root bound and the roots could be kind of yellowish and brown already. If you start them with not enough time, they're gonna be really tiny and succumb to maybe the wind or the sun. And I'm gonna put these in here in that hole and then I'm just gonna backfill with the soil I'm gonna put a little bit above that soil block there, and then I'm just going to uh, press it down in there firmly. And that's really all there is to it. Well, we're on to the very last step. Everything is planted, everything is well watered. The very last step is protecting these plants from the bugs. So we have tried a lot of different things throughout the years. And the best solution that we've come up with for these pots are what we're gonna show you today. And you guys, that are the, that's these right here. These are actually the ones we bought last year. These are fruit tree bags. You can see them here. They're basically a big mesh bag that you can put. They're really designed for on like citrus trees or fruit trees, but you guys, they work perfectly on these pots as well. These come in a variety of different sizes, so you can buy them for whatever size pots or things that you need. But look, <laughs> see, look at that. This will protect me from all the mosquitoes all summer long. <laughs> this is also what we'll be doing uh, when we go blackberry picking. Right. No, just kidding. Right. Just kidding. Right. No, but uh, this is going to work out great. You can see how windy it is today. You guys, we get big, big winds here in the springtime, especially. And last year when we had these on our plants, not a single one of them blew off. The bottoms of them um, have a, a pull string, a pull tie, so it gathers itself around the bottom of the, the pot here, and you can, you can tighten it, and that keeps it nicely wrapped around that pot. Now, let us show you how we actually install these, because you can't just put these directly right. over the pot or it will damage the plants. We actually use this wire that we make, that we bend and we make like an arch inside of the pot. Let me show you how to do that and then we'll show you how to actually put one of these on. All right, so we'll start right here. Here are our wires. Now these are wires that we purchased, gosh, probably five years ago or more from Grower Solutions. And I don't think they sell these anymore, but you guys, you can make these. These are just chain link fence, tension wire cut into about six foot lengths. So. All we're going to do is we're going to take two of these per pot. We're going to bend these over and we're going to make basically a dome over the pot. That way, when we put our bag on, it will protect these plants from the bag blowing in the wind. 
and it will also give the plants some wind protection. You can see how windy it is today. Once we have these bags on, these plants will at least have a little bit of protection from the wind. Hardest part today is going to be actually putting the bag on. So with the drawstring, basically there's just a little thing here. You just pull this, that pulls it nice and snug at the bottom of the pot. And that will stay on now all the way until harvest time. There should be no reason to take these off unless something happens to the sprinkler inside and we need to get in there to fix it or something like that. But otherwise this can just stay on. And like I said, we haven't had a single one of these blow off even in the really strong winds, which is really nice. Well, our project is complete. You guys, what a transformation for this spot back here. Just yesterday morning, this was nothing but really kind of a, a garbage pile back here. It was a spot where we just threw stuff when we didn't know what else to do with it. And now look at it. It's going to be another productive part of the homestead. You guys, we encourage you to take a look around your homestead or your backyard, your side yard, somewhere where you know you just throw stuff outside. You can turn it into an amazing container vegetable garden just like this. So we'd love to hear whether or not it's time for you guys to start planting wherever you are. We know some of you are in much warmer climates than us. Some of you, it's probably still way too cold, but we would love to know, are you excited for this upcoming gardening season? We think this is going to be probably the best gardening season we've had yet. You guys, we're so excited that you stopped by today to watch us turn this junk pile area into a productive container vegetable garden. If you're enjoying videos like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and also make sure that you share this video on your social media with people you know who would enjoy it as well. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.